Hello, and welcome to the seventh Crafty Max Originals Beat Along. For those of you that have your kits, I'm going to start with just the glass pearls and a threaded needle. Now I have put quite a bit of thread on my needle, and that is because you don't want to have to tie too many knots. Yes, this is one of the few stitches that I do recommend knots. I'm going to wrap the what's called the dead tail around my pinky just a few times. Be careful not to do it too tight because you'll cut the circulation off of your finger. But that's to stop the thread from the beads from th falling right off the thread. Okay, what we're going to be doing is called right angle weave. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick up four of the pearls. Now some of them might have holes that you kind of have to push through because they do dye these on the actual um, nylon that you get them on and so sometimes the holes aren't perfect. Just push a little bit and they'll go right through. Now the way that you uh, can remember right angle weave or you'll see it as raw, uh, R-A-W often, is that it's right angles. So it'll be a square for the most part. There are some variations of the stitch, but mostly it is a square. So now what I want you to do, now that you've done your four, is go back through two, and you're gonna go up the tail for the dead tail so that you make a circle, and pull your thread, and you're actually gonna turn out with a square or a triangle, okay? Now the big thing with the right angle weave is you don't ever want to see thread in the center of your squares or diamonds, whichever way you're holding them. You never want to see a thread going across in the middle. That's the biggest thing. If you follow the bead path and the thread path, you will get it right every time as long as there is no threads through the middle. Okay, so this is actually going to be too wide. So we have four and we're going to need four more. So here's one two, three, four. So you're actually only going to pick up three. Okay. And you're going to come back through on the opposite side again so that you make a circle. And you're going to pull it tight and you now have two wide. Okay. Now, one of the things that you have to always do is move your thread around to change the position of where your thread and your needle are coming out. Of course, you don't wanna go across because again, you'll fill up that center of the circle. So, I'm gonna actually flip my work over. I find this is the easiest thing to do. And just follow the thread back around. and come out. Now the reason it's often better to flip your work over is because then your tension is going from two different directions. Okay, so there I have it. Now you can see that my one bead here is very misshapen. It's okay, it'll blend right in. It's not a problem. Okay, so now it's coming out of what I would call the top because we're going to be working this way on our stitches. So the next thing you're going to do is you've already got one you're going to pick up three more. And it's always important to remember that in the basic raw or right angle weave stitch that you always have four corners. Whether you've got it turned as a diamond or a square, it doesn't matter. You always have to have four points. So now I'm going to go back in here again. And once again, I'm making that loop with my thread. Okay. Now, here is where the complications that a lot of people don't understand come in. Once again, we do not want any thread to be going across. So we can't go straight across to this bead. What we have to do is go up. Okay, now that we've gone up, you see where my thread is coming out of. Okay, because there's a hole you don't want a thread coming through. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole. Now, this is the interesting part. How many do we need to make a right angle weave stitch? Four. Okay, so if you need four, here's one, here's two. So you only have to add two beads this time. And what you're going to do is you're going to do one, two, three, and this is your fourth. And you're going to come through here 
and go back up and around so that you're coming out just like I did before in a circle you're just catching that other bead and now when you pull it tight watch what happens you now have one stitch two stitches three stitches four stitches okay so once again I'm gonna move my thread to start the next row so I'm gonna go to this side and the reason I'm going to this side is because you don't have to but I prefer to flip my work over and the reason is because now the tension is coming from the opposite direction so now I have one I'm going to add three more and this is a very what's called repetitive stitch because you're going to do the same thing over and over so there's one and again that that beads a little misshapen it's okay they all blend right in okay so now I have and you'll you'll see me kind of pull back and pull that's all you have to do is to tighten the row before is just kind of pull back on some of the beads and then pull your your thread okay so I have one two three four my next one is gonna have these two in it so what I have to do is move my thread all the way around and be coming out here okay so I'm gonna move it here here and down to this one now when I pull it because remember we don't want to go across anything okay the threads coming out here and this time we're going to go this direction so we have let me get that tail out of there sorry about that we have one two three if I can get that one four and I'm going to go back through here Okay, and back through here just like I did on the row before I'm just going the opposite direction pull it tight and now look what's happened see I have one two three four five six and you can do your little diamonds or squares again depending on how you're holding it okay so I'm gonna do another row I'm gonna go up and over so that I'm coming out the top bead again and if I did not send you thread or if you're watching this video and you already have your own thread I am actually using six pound fire line which is my preferred for this stitch especially I wouldn't go below six pounds and you can use other threads. There's Nymo. Um, there's, I don't know, there's about 300, I think, threads out there. Um, but I prefer Fireline. It's one I found a couple years ago, and I absolutely love it. All right, so I'm coming out of here. So here's one. I need to add two, three, and my fourth bead. And I need to come back around and make that circle. Okay. Now once I'm done with the circle, I have to move it up to this bead. And if you are catching on, you will realize that this is the exact same thing we did the second row. Because I'm turning it back and forth, it will actually be one row done one way, one row done the other way, and just over and over again until you're done. So here's one, here's two, so I need two more. So there's one, two, three, and this is your fourth. So I'm again gonna go through here, and back up here, pull those tight, Okay, and now I have 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And when I say that, I'm talking about the sets of four. And yes, quite a few of them are overlapping, but that's okay. Now you see that this is very flexible and loose. It's okay. If you're doing just right angle weave, you wanna be a little more concerned with your tension, but because we're going back over it with the Swarovski crystals as the last step, I would actually prefer it to be a little loose. You don't want it much looser than this. You still want a little give in it, but you do want it a little loose. If you try and tighten it or go round and round and make them so tight, we won't be able to go back with the crystals. So I will do two more quick rows with just quick, um, quick instructions. And if you need to kind of keep reversing and forwarding. So this will be the same as what you did on the third row. So I'm gonna go around here and move this to this side. Okay, I'm gonna do one, because I already have one there, so I'm gonna put two, three, four, okay, pull that tight, I added that stitch. Now, I need to get over to this bead. So I'm gonna go up, over, and down. Once again, pulling it tight. Okay, so now I am here and I don't wanna cross the openings. So I'm gonna go across to this bead. And if you look, I have one, two, I'm gonna do three, four, and I'm gonna go back through those. Pull it tight, I've just added another row. I'm gonna move my thread to the top, turn my work over, and I'm gonna do it all over again. So I have one at the top, Ouch, that was my finger. Yes, when I say blood, sweat, and tears, I really do mean it sometimes in my creations. You will find that the more you seed bead, the thinner your needles get, and oftentimes the sharper they get. They also are often just as sharp in the back end because they're so thin as they are in the top, in the pointed part. Okay, so I'm gonna move it up to the top. And I already have one. Oh, that one didn't want to get on there. And let's tighten that up a little bit before I add. Okay. So I have one, two, three, four. And I'm going to go through this. All right. Now, I want you to continue on, and the next video will show you how to start doing the crystals. What you want to find or once you want to finish it at is when you put it around your wrist you want to have it so that you have about an inch to an inch and a half between one end and the other end if you're making it for someone else the best guesstimate is to make it about six and a half inches and then you can add it used to be that the average was six inches on a wrist. The average now is six and a half to seven inches. So it's always better if you are questionable to make it a little shorter and add a couple jump rings where it's adjustable than to add it too big because then it'll slide off and they can't wear it. So just continue doing your right angle weave until you get it the length you want and then get lay out your crystals and start video number two. I'll see you then.